Hi Marvel, I'm almost done with phase 4 and I just finished watching Werewolf by Night and to be honest, I, I've been enjoying everything so far but I just have one question. So are we ever going to see him again or are you just going to treat him like the giant floating eternal in the middle of the ocean? Just asking for a friend. Hello everybody, welcome back to Axis Blockbusters. Today we're going to be taking a look back on the special presentation, the first of its kind for the MCU entitled Werewolf by Night directed by famed, acclaimed composer Michael Giacchino. But first, as always, if you haven't subscribed to the Axis Blockbusters YouTube channel, make sure to do so, give this video a like, and let me know in the comments down below whether or not you think the special presentations work for the MCU, and whether or not you liked Werewolf by Night, and whether you would like to see him and Man-Thing appear in the MCU in the future. Let me know in the comments down below. Now, unlike the other videos in this rewatch series, because this is a special presentation, it was about 55 minutes long, and with this and Guardians of the Galaxy, the holiday special, I'm just going to be doing a more laid-back, quicker kind of video, where I just kind of go over what I thought about the, the short presentation this time. Because frankly, I mean, there's just not as much to talk about with these special presentations as there are with the movies and shows, but I'll be talking about how my opinions might have changed and what I thought about the little presentations on the second time around, so stay tuned. Alright, let's get into Werewolf by Night. So one of the, the fun things that went under the radar as Marvel was announcing all these Disney Plus shows and MCU movies in Phase 4 and Phase 5 was that they were going to be doing a couple special presentations. And they, they didn't even really announce them publicly until, I think, D23, literally right before Werewolf by Night came out. And we knew that Werewolf by Night had been in development for a while. I don't know how, but this was just something that we all kind of collectively knew as MCU fans. And so just to, just to hear that they were going to experiment a little bit with the different formats, especially at a time when we had gotten already, what, seven live action Disney Plus shows, and they were pretty hit or miss. So I think it was as good of a time as any to, to experiment with a different format. And we also knew that Guardians of the Galaxy was getting a holiday special. I had no idea what that was about, but you know, interesting. But what was more interesting to me is that Michael Giacchino, just one of the most fantastic composers that is working in Hollywood today, was going to be directing this special presentation. And for those of you who don't know Michael Giacchino, just look up his some of his most notable works. And I'm positive you're going to see some of the films that you loved and some of the scores that you just can't help but listen to and smile. So again, just a great composer, but how is his work going to translate to directing? Now I will say, just very quickly before I get into Werewolf by Night on the rewatch, that the first time I saw it, I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. And actually, I really had no expectations for it at all. I'm not a big horror fan, but turns out that this wasn't really a scary horror kind of thing. It was more just homage to the old monster horror films, and it, it was more violent maybe than horror. And so the second time around, I was just, you know, looking to enjoy it, and I did. I did enjoy it. Now, what I will say about Werewolf by Night is that I think it becomes very clear very quickly that there's nothing, other than stylistically, there's nothing super exceptional about it. I think that the fact that it's an homage to the old scary horror monster movies of early Hollywood with the black and white. And, and there are, for, for sure, there are a couple really impressive and entertaining shots. For example, the one shot that pans in on the on the little hallway as the door is closing on Jack as he's beating up all these guards. I mean, that's that's one of the most unique shots I've seen in a while with the blood kind of pouring down on the camera lens. I think that that's great, actually. The MCU kind of needs more of that in different areas of, of their filmmaking, for sure. Not that in particular. I mean, just more uniqueness in that regard. But overall, other than the black and white, which I think the black and white's a great touch, I think that the making it look like it was filmed on a camera, like with the actual film, is is a great touch for sure. But you kind of go through the story beats, and it's fairly generic, I would say. It's not not entertaining. In fact, it's pretty fun to watch, and if you have 15 minutes and it's Halloween or whatever, and you're you know looking for your MCU Halloween fix, I, I would say that this isn't the worst thing in the world to watch. And I think that the performances, first of all, by Gail Garcia Bernal and Laura Donnelly, who play Werewolf by Night, Jack Russell, and Elsa Bloodstone, are fine. I think that they do a fine job. I wouldn't hate to see them again in the MCU. I also am not clamoring to see them again in the MCU. The joke I made in the cold open of this video was really more just a jab at the MCU lacking continuity in Phase 4. Like, I I wouldn't be dying for a Werewolf by Night standalone film, for example, but I just, I would love to see the MCU acknowledge that these monsters exist, you know, Midnight Suns, maybe with Moon Knight and Blade and Werewolf by Night and Man-Thing. That would be really fun with, of course, Elsa Bloodstone as well. I think that would be really fun and just acknowledging that there is this corner of the MCU that, you know, it's there, and we're not acknowledging, so there's that. But I think that, in general, it's just a basic sort of monster hunting thing. Now, what I will say, though, is what does give this special presentation a little bit more depth than it would have just otherwise if it had just been a monster hunting 50 minutes is that Ted, who is Man-Thing, by the way, Ted and Jack, who is Werewolf by Night, they have a, a relationship. They're good friends. And so I think that that actually adds an extra layer of depth because it's not just about these monsters attacking people and then these monster hunters are going after this one monster and then it turns out that one of the hunters is a monster like that's that's fine and all it's it's entertaining at least but i think that what gives this short a little bit extra depth is just the fact that there is an existing relationship between 
Werewolf by Night and Man Thing, which I think is really cool. And it's it's fun. It's cute. And I would describe the whole thing as kind of cute, which is really weird for me to say because it's pretty violent for the MCU at least. And I think cute means more so that the entire scope of this project is sort of a cute little presentation of what these special presentations are capable of, if that makes sense. Like, it even has the end at the end, which is, I think, just such a fun way to kind of wrap up this little 50-minute piece of entertainment, which is which is fun. Now, whether or not this is going to relate to the MCU, I don't know, because on the one hand, like I said before, I'm a big fan of these special presentations. I think that you can do a lot with them in a very short amount of time with tight storytelling. And to its credit, Werewolf by Night has very tight, sharp storytelling. There's really not a lot of time that's wasted, which I really appreciate, especially after seeing some of these MCU Disney Plus shows. However, if we're just going to throw random concepts into these special presentations that never go anywhere, and this is just Kevin Feige's excuse to be like, I kind of just want to see this character for no reason, maybe I'm a little bit less of a fan of that. I mean, it's fun. You know, you get Werewolf by Night for sure, but and I, I would be a big fan of seeing more of these special presentations, but honestly, I, I would just want to tighten up all the storytelling all these characters, because what these special presentations do at least in this case, is introduced an entirely new character that has no place in the MCU seemingly thus far. That being said, Werewolf by Night on its own, I had a really good time. I thought that it was entertaining. I thought that the visuals were pretty fun. I thought that maybe for the most part, the story was a little bit generic, but the action was pretty cool. Some of the shots were really cool. And I think the most important thing, honestly, is that this was Michael Giacchino's introduction to directing. And I think that obviously there are ways that he can improve, but I think for the most part, it was a fantastic debut. And I would, I would not be mad to see him direct more things in the future. I think that that would be a great thing. But also... That's only if he keeps composing because his compositions are incredible. So what did you guys think of Werewolf by Night? A little bit of a shorter video as I took a look back on the first special presentation from the MCU. Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure to subscribe to the Access Blockbusters YouTube channel and I will see you guys in the next one.